The Rails 3.1 Hackfest took place last weekend, and thanks to all the hard work of those who participated, the fifth release candidate of 3.1 is now out. Now this includes some important fixes to a feature I've been wanting to show off, which is mountable engines. Now mountable engines is like mounting one Rails app into another. Let me show you here. Now some of you may remember the exception logger plugin. This basically stored your exceptions in a database and gave you a nice interface for browsing through them. Now in this episode I want to remake this plugin, but through a mountable engine. First, make sure you're using Rails 3.1, Release Candidate 5, or newer. If you don't have this, you can just gem install Rails, double dash pre, uh, to get it. So now we can generate our mountable engine. Now first of all, notice that I'm not in a Rails application here because this is almost like generating, generating a new Rails app with the Rails new command. So to generate one, you call Rails plugin new, and then give it a name. So I'm going to call this, uh-oh, because it's dealing with exceptions. And then you pass the double dash mountable option here, so that makes it a mountable engine. So now let's open this up and see what it gave us. First of all, you'll notice that this looks a lot like any other Rails application, and it basically is, but it's just one that's designed to be mounted inside another one. Another thing you'll notice is that uh, there's a lot of namespace directories going on here where everything is namespaced under the engine name, which is uh-oh. And this will keep everything nice and separated from everything else in the application that it's mounted in. And you may also notice that we have assets. So you no longer have to worry about copying these assets into the public directory when the application gets mounted because thanks to the asset pipeline, it'll all just dynamically uh, handle this for us. And notice that assets are also namespaced under that directory. So this means when you link to your assets, you always need to go through that namespace. And you can see this inside the layout file. So if we check out our views directory here under layouts, and actually I think there's a bug here because we have two layout files and you can just delete the one that's outside of the namespace directory if you see it. Uh, hopefully this will be fixed uh, soon. And But if you check out the layout file inside of here, you notice that it's always referencing assets underneath the uh, namespace directory here. So whenever you're linking to images or any other assets, be sure to include that namespace. Now let's check out one of the key files that makes up an engine, and that is inside the lib directory here. Notice that we have a file called engine.rb, and this is a class which inherits from Rails engine. And this is sort of the central location where you can put custom configuration, and notice there's already a line here that says isolate namespace, uh-oh. And this basically means it's going to uh, treat this engine sort of as its own isolated unit and not worry about everything around it that's in the app you mount it in. Now our final stop of this whirlwind tour is inside the test directory. Notice that inside of here, we have a little dummy test app here. So this is actually a Rails app on its own, and it's sort of a, an example of how you, to use this engine. So it's sort of a, okay, this is what it would look like mounted inside of another Rails app. And if you check out the config directory here, you can see that you have a routes file. And this has an interesting line here called mount, and then it's passing in the engine name and assigning it to the path. So this is what someone will have to do when they install your, your gem here, is to mount it to any kind of given path that they want. Now notice this uses the engine class that I showed you earlier, and this is a true rack application here. So we're basically just saying if a request comes in to this path, just pass it on to the engine rack application. Now it's a good idea to add this line to the installation instructions inside of your readme so that the users know that this is how they mount the application in the routes file. Now even though this dummy app is inside of the test directory, it's still useful for manually testing as well. If we run the Rails server command, it's actually going to boot up that dummy application. Now if we go to localhost port 3000 slash uh-oh, that's actually going to go to our engine because that's where it's mounted in our dummy app. Now if we hit return here, it's actually not going to do anything because we don't have any controller to handle this yet. We can use the generators just like we do in any Rails app, so we can generate a controller here, and it's not necessary to do the namespacing. It'll automatically handle that for us because it knows it's inside of an engine. So let's generate a controller called failures and give it an index action. And notice that generated everything we expected in a normal controller generator, except it's namespaced. Now if you look inside of the engine's config directory, you'll notice there's a routes file where you can customize the routing for the engine itself. Now we can make a custom 
a root route here to point to that failures uh, index action that we just made. So now if we reload our browser instead of a routing error, it now points us to the index uh, template action here which was generated. Now what I want to do here is list out the exceptions which were raised. So we'll need a model of some kind to store them in the database. So let's generate a model here inside of our engine, call it failure. And to keep things simple, I'll just give it a single column here called uh, message. And as we expect, it put the model inside of a namespace here. Now how do we handle the migrations though? Well, inside of the engine itself, we can just run rakedb migrate and everything will be handled automatically for us. However, this will not work when someone tries to mount this engine inside of their application because it's not going to pick up the migrations which are inside of mounted engines. Uh, to, to get around this, you have to instruct the users of the gem to first call rake, uh, uh oh, install migrations, and that'll copy over the migrations from the engine into their own app so that they can run rakedb migrate and generate the tables properly. So be sure to include this in the installation instructions of the engine you're making. Now the Rails console works just like you expected as well, so just start it up like normal. Now while you're in here, just be sure to include the namespace whenever you're referencing a class. So we can create a failure here, and include a message saying hello world, like that. So now that we have a record in our database, let's display that on the index action in our failures controller. Now it's not necessary to specify the namespace here though because we're already inside of the namespace in Ruby and the way the lookup works, it'll just automatically pick it up. So that's all that's needed. And then inside of the index template, I'll just paste in some code to loop through the failures and display them. And then when we reload our page here, you can see there's our failure message we generated. So that works. So now all we need to do is just generate these failure records whenever an exception is raised. So we need to somehow simulate the raising of an exception inside of the dummy application. So if we change into the test dummy directory, we can run Rails generators inside of here to simulate uh, the environment that the engine is intended to be mounted into. In this case, we need some place to generate an exception. So let's generate a controller with uh, called simulate and uh, give it a failure uh, action. And then inside this generated controller, we can just have this action raise an exception. So let's just say simulating an exception. So now if we try to visit that controller action, simulate failure, we get that exception which is raised like we expect. Now we just need to change our engine so it listens for this exception and creates a new failure record. Now my solution for this problem is not very efficient, but it's just a simple solution that will work for our case. Now, what I wanna do is first create an initializer. And if you look under the config directory of our engine, uh, there's no initializers here, but we can create one and it seems to be fully supported by engines. So we'll just make a new folder here called initializers. And then inside of here, let's make a new file. Uh, sure, let's call it exception handler.rb. Now I'm just going to paste in some code to handle this tricky job for us. Now notice here, I'm subscribing to a notification. Now I covered notifications in detail in episode number 249. So I'm basically listening to a notification that a controller action was processed. And if the payload contains an exception, that means an exception was raised while it was processing. And if I, you see here, it's going to parse through the exception and get the message and then create a failure with that message. So that should create a failure when we raise an exception. Now don't forget to restart the server, but after that, just hit reload here and to simulate the exception again. And now if we go to uh, slash fail or slash, uh-oh, it should show, yep, simulating an exception because it caught the notification and created the failure record. Now a quick word about URLs. While you're inside of an engine, any URL helpers you use will be for that engine. For example, while we're in our failures page, let's say we want a link uh, let's just link to the same page, which will be the root URL. So let's link to uh, failures, and that goes to the root URL. This will be the root URL for the engine itself. For example, if we reload our browser here, you can see we have this failures link, and that actually goes to this exact same page because it's the root URL for the engine, not the root URL for the app itself. Now you're able to access URL helpers for the app itself by prefixing it with main app. So if we say main app.root URL, that will go to the root URL for the app itself and not the engine. 
Now, since we don't have this, we have um, our simulate failure path page that we can use instead. Let's just call this simulate failure. And now if we reload, we now have our simulate failure link, and this will take us to the application's simulate failure page here. Now let's say we're on the other side of the situation where we are inside of the dummy application and we want to link to a page that's inside of the engine. Well, the first step is to go into your routes file where you call mount and then pass in an as option and say whatever name you want for the engine. Uh, let's call this uh-oh engine. And then you can go inside of your controller. In this case, we'll go to our simulate controller and you can use um, the URL helpers through that. So temporarily here, let's just remove the raise command and we can say uh-oh engine and then call root URL and access the root URL here. So let's just redirect to that URL. So now when we try to go to our local host port 3000 simulate failure page, it'll take us to the uh-oh engines root URL page uh, because we're going through that engine helper. So that's how you link to a page that is inside of an engine. Now you may want to mention this inside of the readme for your engine that you're making. And I'll just restore the original functionality of raising an exception here. So the functionality of our engine is pretty much done, but the page itself is looking a little dull. So let's spice it up with some assets. First, let's add an image to the top of our failures page here. Now I already went and found an image off camera, so I've already added it here. So let's just include it at the top here. And just like any other image, we'll use image tag and then point it to uh oh slash alert.png. There we go. And reloading our page here, we can see there's our fancy alert image. Now let's include some style. So under my style sheets, I'll just paste in some code under the failures.css file here. Now SAS and CoffeeScript aren't available by default in these engines, and you may or may not want to add them as dependencies, so I just won't use them here. But you can see if I reload the page here, uh, it looks quite a bit nicer now. So this style sheet code was just picked up by default. We didn't have to do anything. So the same thing goes with the JavaScript. Let's just add some JavaScript code to our failures JavaScript file here. This will just slide up each section in our list if we click on it. And try reloading our page here and clicking on an item in this list and notice it automatically slides up. So that JavaScript was automatically picked up and handled by the asset pipeline without us having to do anything. Well, that wraps up this episode on creating a mountable engine. I hope you enjoyed it. Really awesome feature in Rails 3.1. I can't wait to use it more.